Hey guys, welcome back to How to Escape. This is Ra Rina here, and today we're going to be going over a demo video on replacing the fog light, the parking light, and the turn signal lamp on our lower lamp assemblies in our 2013 and up Ford Escapes. The Ford service manual says to access these bulbs by going through the wheel wells. This is very difficult physically and visibly. If you'd like to pursue this method, we will initially show you what to look for, what to avoid, and how to remove your bulbs. The remainder of this video, though, is going to be step-by-step -step bumper cover removal for the best and most open access to your bulbs. Feel free to skip to the following times. Let's start in the driver's front wheel well. All right, so now looking in, we have the wheel well liner removed. You can reach around this silver module that's here, and you can basically touch the bulbs that you're trying to get to. But these tabs right here, and this part down here, as well as the liner, it's gonna always wanna be closing up on your arm. It eats you up. So I would recommend in terms of trying to find your turn signal, your parking light and your fog light, lowering the front bumper cover a little bit to be able to get some upwards access more from um, the middle here than trying to go around. I've stuck my phone in here kind of where your arm needs to go. It's underneath this silver module right here. But looking up in the top left is going to be your fog light assembly. Again, the middle is your parking light and on the right is your turn signal. Now these wire harnesses are fastened to these housings with push rivets, so it's not like you can pull the whole wire harness out and swap the bulb out outside of the wheel well. What I would recommend doing is disconnecting the wire harness from the bulb itself, removing the bulb by doing a quarter turn counterclockwise, installing your new bulb by inserting it into the keyway, doing a clockwise quarter turn to lock it in place, and then reconnect these wire harnesses. This camera is making it look a little bit easier than it is, because I stuck the camera underneath that silver box. But with the lower bumper cover loosened up, it gives you a little bit more room to get in here. I just wanted to show you at least what you're reaching for. Looking at the passenger side, the difference here is that we have the wiper fluid reservoir right there to complicate access to these lights. Now you can easily access the fog light, which is right there. But then the parking light that's in the middle, and then the turn signal that's on the inside, are the ones that are going to be a little bit harder to get to because you're going to have to reach all the way around the wiper fluid reservoir. I would say take the wheel off just to give yourself more access to pull this fender liner back and to access those lights. Same twist lock effect as in the driver's side. Although this method is possible, it is very difficult to demonstrate with the limited visibility and limited physical access. The bumper cover removal method we're about to show you has more steps to the procedure, but it is straightforward and you will have much less difficulty and frustration. Please note that you'll be able to find all bulbs in many parts with this procedure on our Amazon Associates storefront, as well as in the Rarina mobile app, which you can download today. Now, if you're going to go the bumper cover removal route, it's way easier to access these lights, of course, when you don't have anything covering them up here. So again, here is your fog light, here is your parking light, and here is your turn signal. Tools needed for these three procedures include jack stands and the associated lifting components here, 7, 8, 10 millimeter sockets, a socket wrench with extensions, plastic pry tool, an optional socket U-joint, Phillips and small flathead driver, a T30 Torx driver, and an optional power drill. First, we're going to get the front of your escape up on jack stand. So here you have the three most common types of jacks that you'll encounter when trying to lift a vehicle. On the right, you have your standard scissor jack that comes with your spare tire. In the back you have a floor jack, and on the left you have jack stands. So as you can see, here is the arrow notating the jack point location that you'll find in your manual, and it points to that cavity right there. Now you'll notice the pinch weld coming all the way down this way. That's a pinch welded subframe. You'll also notice that there's a flat surface on this side of the pinch weld that you can't always see from the outside. If you were to just use a flat floor jack, you would come up and hit this pinch weld and bend it. As you can see that there are some bends that are already in here. If you're just going to be using your scissor jack, you slide it in place and crank it up, no big deal, because you're doing a pretty quick job. 
However, if you're going to have your car up in the air for an extended period of time, you're going to want to use jack stands. But then, how do these two different heads compete for that space? Well, you can see the shoulder on the top of the scissor jack sticks up, and it will actually make contact with this top surface up here on the other side of the pinch weld. So now what we do is we use our scissor jack, and we're going to scoot it back maybe about 8 inches or so just so that we have enough room for our floor jack to scoot in from the side and plug into that cavity. So now that we have the car up, we have enough room to place our floor jack in place. And now we lower it down. Get out of the way and pull it out. And there's your jack stand in the correctly noted spot. If you'd really like to use a floor jack, try this trick with a hockey puck. Get a puck, cut it down the middle, and you'll have a spacer to put on top of the flat surface and behind your pinch well. Alright, so the reasons the magnets help, because you can go anywhere along the inside of the pinch subframe and stick it on there to still leave room for your, your jack stand. And you position your floor jack and go. Lower it as needed, of course. Now it's time to remove the bumper cover. Remember, any step in this procedure needs to be done on both sides of your skin. So just to save some time, we already have the car up on jack stands in the front and contacting the ground in the back. There's a chalk behind the back wheel, even though the car is in park. The front wheels are off the ground just enough for clearance so that you can still turn the wheels manually by hand side to side if you want. The splash shield is removed by just removing the three screws in the back, the four screws in the front, and one on each side. Right, we're going to start by removing these, this trim panel that goes around the wheel well as well as this block here. There, there are two plastic nut rivets here, There's one, two, three here, one, two there, as well as one, two, three, four, seven millimeter fasteners. Once you take all of those out, you pull this out here. We can manually turn the wheel this way. Seven millimeter socket. Then we want to remove one, two, three, four, five fasteners here, and then two on the underside. Now that we have all of these fasteners removed, we should be able to pull the whole piece out. One thing to note here when you're taking off your wheel well liners is that you have these white trim buttons probably you know, every foot or so along the radius of your wheel well. If you can at least push down and get that top tab to be depressed, it'll be a lot easier when you're trying to pry it out. You may need to order some spares though when you're putting them back on because sometimes they do break. Now we're going to go back and we're going to remove one, two, three more seven millimeter fasteners. Okay. So with the splash shield off, we're going to be removing our last remaining visible um, T30 screws. There are three of them. Next we're going to be doing all remaining 7mm fasteners all along the bumper cover. There should be 14 altogether. So to note when looking under the corner of the bumper cover, there should be trim fasteners here, one on each side that you need to pull out as well. Mine was missing them. Next we're going to remove the latch for your hood by taking off these two 8mm screws. Next we have 9 trim fasteners to remove, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9.
Okay, all nine removed. Here they are. We can now lift this tray up, including this. Flip it back over there. Now we're going to take out the top fasteners here. We have one seven millimeter fastener on either side for a total of two, and then seven 10 millimeter fasteners going all the way across the ends. Looking inside, right above the wheel well, you have three 10 millimeter bolts on each side right here, those three gray ones. Those are gonna to need to come out. You can reach in through the top, but you might be twisting your arm and it might be hard to get to. One more thing you can do for better access is to come outside and remove any remaining fasteners that might stop this wheel well from coming down. And once you do that, you have straight access to reach up there and get those bolts out. Something that made this job a lot easier with getting those screws out was to get a quarter inch long straight extension with a quarter inch universal joint, a shorter extension, and then your 10 millimeter socket. If you reached under into the wheel well with the drill and reached over around your headlight and down to find the footing and connect the 10 millimeter socket to the head of the bolt and just hold it down here and keep your fingers clear of this U-joint, you could actually make quick work of getting those screws out. If you don't have this stuff, a regular socket wrench will do, but in those tight quarters, you just don't have much room for stroke, so this drill was a big help. Whatever your method, these screws must be removed and just take some time. Eventually, you will get all six out. Looking right in front of the driver's front wheel, um, you have the engine control module here. You have the fog light housing assembly on the other side of this. There is a wire harness that needs to be disconnected before we pull the bumper off, and this connects all of the main bumper mounted electronics. I've already loosened it for the sake of the video so I can do this one handed, but disconnect that. Before we go to pull our bumper cover off, make sure that you're clearing those little nubs on the top right here. Another thing to note where those three screws were just removed, before the bumper can drop, there are two tabs that you snap into place here that holds the bumper in position so that you can put the three screws back in later. Press those two tabs back and then drop the bumper down. You should start to see it separate as you push those tabs down. Alright, now I'm just going to kind of massage it all out of place. Is your bumper assembly. All right, now that we have our bumper cover removed, there's really a lot of things that you can do and get to. Um, you could replace your headlights, you could get to your horn, you can get to your washer fluid reservoir, you can get to your fog lights, your parking lights, and your turn signals. Um, there's a lot you can do once you pull off this bumper cover. All right, so we have the bumper cover fully reassembled and in place. Everything's pulled back together. I just want to give a few tips here that will hopefully save you all some time and aggravation when getting this back together. First one is looking where the bumper cover slides into the headlight. There are little tabs which will tuck into this gap right under the headlight and they kind of grip into snaps. So when you're trying to align the bumper, when reinstalling it, make sure that those tabs are tucked in on both sides under both headlights. All right, second is this body panel gap between the front bumper cover and the front quarter panel where you have the three screws that are kind of difficult to get to. Make sure that this gap is fully closed. If you see it open, but you thought you remembered tightening your screw all the way, there's probably something wrong with your fastener and check that out before you button everything back up. this trim molding here get those white clips even if they've snapped a little bit see if you can get them to sit back into those um, little notched areas on the back side 
walk your hand up and around the molding and press those white snaps in and they'll hold them in place long enough for you to start aligning these holes. If these holes for these plastic fasteners and these seven millimeter fasteners do not line up perfectly, you can kind of squeeze and push the liner and this trim molding around so that you can line it up with the actual material on the bumper cover. Finally, after removing the bumper cover, we have access to our bulbs. So again, here is your fog light, here is your parking light, and here is your turn signal. Please note that the turn signal and parking light bulbs come out of the plastic sockets when replacing them. You will just be installing a glass bulb. Minimize skin contact on the glass for oils. So to remove this turn signal, you're going to do a quarter turn to the left. Replace the 7440 NA bulb by pulling it from the plastic socket and install your new bulb. They're omnidirectional, so there's no wrong way to install it. You can use a cloth or rag to avoid skin contact and oils on the glass. Check out your keying features here. Insert it here, quarter turn clockwise to lock it in. For your parking light, same thing, quarter turn counterclockwise comes out. This is a much smaller bulb assembly. This is a part number 2827NA natural amber or 12396NA natural amber. Just as with the previous bulb, pull out the 2827NA or 12396NA bulb. It is omnidirectional and replaced with a cloth to avoid oils. Check out your keying features here. Big square, big square. And then quarter turn clockwise to lock it in. Now going to your fog light. Your fog light is going to be bulb 9145. You're going to turn your fog light quarter turn counterclockwise. And this is a halogen bulb on my 2013 1.6 liter SE. So this halogen bulb has an attachment point here on the back. I'm going to lift up these two tabs and pull the halogen bulb free. When I get my new 9145 halogen bulb, I'm going to not touch the glass. I'm going to slide it in over this rubber boot until that clicks. And I'm going to pay attention to my keying features. Insert it right there then turn it clockwise to lock it back in. And that is how you change your turn signal, parking light, and fog light on a 2013 SE as well as other escapes. And this is with the bumper cover removal. If you choose not to remove your bumper cover, um, it's a lot tighter corners. It's doable, but it's a lot harder to get those things disconnected and get to the wire harness. If you need to replace a housing and not just a bulb, simply remove the screws holding it to the bumper cover and pop it out once all the bulbs and harnesses are removed. Then reassemble everything in reverse. All right, so that about does it for our fog light, parking light, and turn signal replacement for the lower light assemblies on our 2013 and up Ford Escapes. This was the bumper cover removal method. While it's showing you the access points in from the wheel wells, it is a little tougher, but it is possible, of course. You just got to be okay with your arm getting a little banged up. If you thought this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out these bulbs on our Amazon storefront, and be on the lookout for the Rowrena app. It's on its way, we're working hard on it, and it'll be here soon. Thanks for watching How to Escape, let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.